Want to hear from him again? We're going to start, Scott? Yeah. All right, so we'll call the meeting to order at 6.03. And Ms. Brandon, would you leave the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll open the meeting up for public comment. Anybody wish to speak before we start the agenda? Public comment? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to suspend the regular order of business and entertain the uh, transfer of operating authority before us from AMR to AMGH. JT, and second from Don Trippes. On the question? Okay, we've suspended the regular order of business. Um, Mr. Stryker, I believe you have a report. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the council previously received notice from the New York State Department of Health by correspondence dated September 5th of 2017 from Daniel Clayton, Deputy Director of the Bureau of EMS regarding the transfer of the controlling interests of AMR Holdings, Inc. to uh, Air Medical Group Holdings, Inc. I offer a copy of that correspondence of, as Exhibit A and ask that it be included in the record and transcript for tonight. The council is required under Article 30 to determine if the proposed new owner is competent and fit to operate the service. The Systems Committee has met and determined that the application to the extent of our review is complete. On October 24th of 2017, Chairman Brunner corresponded with Daniel Clayton of the Bureau of EMS and advised that the application was complete. Chairman uh, Brunner requested in the same email that the DOH conduct the fitness and competency review on behalf of the council. I offer a copy of that correspondence by Chairman Brunner to Daniel Clayton and others at the Bureau on October 24th, 2017 as Exhibit B and ask that it be included in the record and transcript for tonight. Thereafter, Richard Brandt of the Bureau of EMS advised Chairman Brunner that the Bureau completed the fitness, fitness and competency review and that there is no bar to fit to the fitness and competency of the company and other named persons. I offer a copy of the letter of Richard R. Brandt of the Investigations and Operations Unit dated October 24, 2017 as Exhibit C. And I ask that it be included in the record and transcript for this evening. On that basis, the committee hereby recommends, and I so move, that the council determine that the proposed new owner, Air Medical Group Holdings Incorporated, based on the Bureau of EMS Fitness and Competency Review dated October 24th of this year, is competent and fit to operate the service. Approving the fitness and competency and the transfer of ownership from uh, American Medical Response to Air Medical Group Holdings. A vote of no is opposed to the transfer. An abstention tonight will have the same effect as a vote of no, as we require a total of 14 votes in favor of the motion for it to pass. Um, I am not calling the roll. I just want to confirm those voting members present. So if you would indicate that you are here, and if you don't hear your name, let me know. Uh, Anthony Billet here. Here. Lanny Brandon. Here. Brian Bronner here. Crystal Fisher. Here. Tracy Chalmers. Here. Gregory Gill. Here. James Glass. Here. Ann Lapp. Here. Thomas Maxian. Here. Daniel McCartan. Here. Daniel Rogers. Here. Anthony Santoro. Here. William Stryker. Here. Donald Trepez. Present. Donald Turner. Here. Any voting members present not accounted for? Clifford Smith. 
You're here? Excellent. Um, anybody else not accounted for in that list? Okay, great. Uh, so we have Sixteen voting members. Uh, Tracy, if you call the roll, please. Okay. Anthony Bills here. Here. Lonnie Brandon. Here. Okay, here. Here. Brian Brunner. Yes. Crystal Fisher. Yes. Tracy Chalmers. Yes. Gregory Gill. Here. James Sass. Yes. Ann Laugh. Yes. Thomas Maxian. I want to disclose that I am an employee of AMR. I am not an uh, officer of AMR or AMGH or any vested interest in the company other than collecting a paycheck. Dan McCartan? Yes. Dan Rogers? Yes. Tony Santoro? Yes. Cliff Smith? I also am an employee of AMR. I love this. William Stryker? Yes. Don Trepas? Yes. And Don Turner? Yes. Um, 16 so yes votes, so two disclosures. Roll call complete. 16 in favor, none opposing, none abstaining. The motion passes. I believe uh, Attorney Mahoney has a document for signature and uh, distribution in New York State. I do. That, that correspondence simply uh, <coughs> confirming the result of the roll call uh, vote on the finding of the council. Thank you. I'll return this to you this evening and uh, we'll have it out for the state. Okay, that matter is closed. Uh, any, um, excuse me, we have received the deposit from American Medical Response and AMGH in the amount of $750 to account for expenses in the process. Those expenses will include some attorney's fees for the council and the stenographer this evening. When those expenses are totaled, um, we will give an accounting to AMR. If the amount exceeds the uh, $750 deposit, we'll need a motion to bill them for the remaining amount. If it does not exceed, then we will return to them uh, any unused funds. So I'll entertain a motion to submit a bill in the event that it does exceed the deposit. Bill Stryker, second for Dan McCartan. On the question? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? I believe that concludes the matter. Uh, motion to return to the regular order of business. JT? And thank you to our lovely stenographer. We appreciate your help tonight. You can include that on the record or not. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do I give these to her? Sure. Or? Yeah, if, uh, Thanks. Thank you. Okay, back to the regular order of business. Has everybody received and had a chance to review the minutes? Any questions on the minutes? A uh, motion to accept the minutes. Crystal, Ann, on the question? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Done. Uh, correspondence. Tracy's filling in for Chris tonight. So several things received since the last meeting. Um, September 29th. From New York State EMS, a letter regarding the transfer of ownership from AMR to AIR Medical Group Holdings, Inc., and an error in their application with the correction attached, and that was sent to the Council and Systems Committee. Also on the 29th, received from AMR, transfer of ownership application and a flash drive from AMR to AIR Medical Group Holdings, Inc., also transferred to the Council and Systems Committee. On September 29th, from Erie Community College, Updated course outline for the basic EMT North Campus. Course application for EMT refresher, um, Instructor Carlo at North. And that was sent to the Council and to the Training Committee. On October 4th, Erie County EMS. Course applications, EMT refresher, 
Orozco, a Sapphire Fire, EMT Original and Refresher, Peterson, a Gary County Fire Training Academy, EMT Refresher, McDonald, uh, Buffalo Fire, forwarded to Council and the Training Committee. On October 10th, Cardiac Life, PID application, Heritage Centers for Town One in New York and Chippewa New York, and that was sent to Council and the DMV. And finally, on October 25th, Star Control Fire Department, application of CON for expansion of territory, and a check for $7,500 for to Council and Assistance Committee. And we received tonight um, an updated version of the CON application from Erie County. Um, so we will accept that tonight. It will forward to Systems Committee for a hearing in the next few days. Um, and Greg, I do have a, a receipt for the check as well, if you can grab that for the next over. Thank you. Uh, Treasurer's report. Madonna is unfortunately not here. We did get our updated budget as well as expenses. Madonna has filed for our um, um, quarterly New York State filing to obtain the monies that were due out of that uh, uh, 25000 and pursuant to our contract. That deposit's not been made yet. I believe all the information was transmitted in advance of the meeting. Everybody had a chance to review that? Excellent. Uh, so we'll entertain a motion to accept the treasurer's report. JT. Second. Second from Bill. On the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. State Council, Mr. Gill. State Council, Matt. It was just, there are changes. It will be a few hours. We'll send you stuff. A few hours at most, but less skills. Right. We do the skills annual for the portal. So I'm not really Which is an extension of the medical director anyway, so be interested to know if they're likely to take it. So. I think the only other thing that was noteworthy was the, uh, they continue to develop the CC bridge. So for those of you that have CCs that are, interested in becoming paramedics despite the fact that it was seemingly ready to roll out when they originally had the vote um, it appears to still be in development and they've not provided a great deal of information on that I don't know if uh, you got a little more training that Greg or still working on it yeah so that's a uh, kind of a secret that we hope to hear about soon anybody have anything for Greg and State Council I see in the report that you mentioned It's basically a review of the protocols. Um, the unofficial version I've heard, and Greg and Scott, correct me if you've heard different, is that it's basically going to be uh, the collaborative protocol BLS version just adopted by the state. Is that what you, you both heard as well? Okay. Other questions for Greg? State Council? Okay. Erie County, Greg? Uh, as you heard, Erie County. Um, and, uh, 
Congressman, that has been kind of quiet.
So all in all, it will be a, a high stress Friday next week. <coughs> but it's the holidays for lots of folks. Schools will be closed. So that will hopefully decrease the amount of traffic and things downtown. And at the moment, Mother Nature is saying 47 and 37. Have you sent correspondence to uh, all the EMS agencies about the closure and when to start going to OSHA as opposed to Bryant? It will be going out. Okay, so great. Those will be supporting and giving out information that may be available to help guide ambulances. It's not so much for the ambulances or the larger commercial sites, but more for the, 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 the uh, surrounding fire departments out of town, fire departments. Great. We're going to set it up for everyone else. Great. Yes, the state, uh, New York State Emergency Management is going to be having a conference call with um, emergency managers from the from Erie and the surrounding counties at some point. <coughs> Maybe Friday, again, maybe the next week. I'm not sure when when Doug's going to do that. I haven't heard anything. Uh, but he's, he, um, next Friday, he said that that will be that will be happening. State emergency managers will be there next Friday, and then the CMC to kind of go through you know the what ifs if we have an MCF. We will be up staff. We will have command staff at the hospital for the duration, and we'll actually have children requested. One of ECMC's folks that has dealt with an MCI, I think, before <coughs> to be the person to either sit there at OSHAI just in case. And if something bad happens, they will they will take over with the children's chief nursing officer, and the two of them will manage the MCI. Um, that was part of your report, Craig. So, anything else from your county? I took credit for that. Okay. <laughs> well done. There's nothing else, I think. Okay. Anything for Craig at Erie County? Yep. Bill, Wyoming County? Um, just uh, working towards our uh, fall winter training. Uh, I think we have two classes lining up. Um, working with ECMC, uh, we just got the boot classes, and uh, we're rolling out the uh, active service for our fire EMS units. Okay. Anything for Bill in Wyoming County? Uh, West New York stress, I believe, JT, is that you, or is it Greg? Uh, both, actually. Yeah, it's both. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, we'll try to reach with someone. We'll try to get a better report. I've talked to Reader about it. And we'll have a better report to be able to get how many times I'm told it hasn't been that busy for them, so okay. I'm not sure how that works. But. Anything for Western New York stress? All right, committee reports. Tony, budget? No report. Anything for Tony? Membership, Ann. Um, still have a full membership, 13 from each county, uh, and I have four alter alternates for Erie, and still the two pending Erie applications. Great. Anything for membership? Okay. Uh, systems Committee, we already did the AMR transfer of ownership, and Tracy has a notes from Mark. Okay, notes from Mark. <clears throat> Receives Drucker Bill's um, EOT application, hopes to get the committee together next week. Received Erie County's municipal CON committee found some issues. The application has been returned, which is already noted here. And we already discussed the AMR's transfer. And that's it, submitted by Mark. And uh, noted on the agenda was a High View updated BLSFR. That was just correspondence received from uh, information High View sent to uh, the Bureau of EMS. No substantial change in operations or anything that we need to vote upon. Um, we have the updated um, or Responding Erie County uh, application. Is there anything else for systems? Just as a note for systems, um, thank you to Greg, Tom, Don, Crystal, Mark, Bill. I think it's everybody. Um, you guys are incredibly busy right now, and it's going to be a hard time for us going forward for a little bit. But uh, appreciate all the work that you guys are doing and um, how reasonable the process has been for everybody. So thank you. Do you have notes from Chris for turning it up? No notes on training in ed. Does anybody have anything for training in ed? Nothing. 
bylaws, Mr. Glass. So we had a meeting of the bylaws committee uh, last week. Um, I was quite elated that uh, some people interested and uh, actually one showed up. The other two had uh, conflicts that they couldn't make. Um, so it was very encouraging that uh, people are actually interested in being on the bylaws committee. Um, we did talk about uh, <coughs> some things we want to do as far as it's time nothing against anybody time constraints of that we understand that but we need a little more uh, activeness from the uh, uh, members um, Tom and I had sat down Tom showed up um, I gave him some uh, policies and procedures that we've been working on uh, that never got through yet and some uh, bylaw proposals uh, the process uh, he's reviewing those right now Um, <clears throat> something I also brought up with the committee, I've been doing this for umpteen number of years, probably longer than some of you've been born. Uh, I felt that it was time for a change, um, being pretty much, like I said before, that there hasn't been that much of an interest in it. I've been doing this pretty much on my own, and I thought that was doing a disservice to the council, so I will continue on by law committee. Uh, if we could have a new chair, uh, fresh ideas, new ideas, different eyes looking at something, um, different ideas. So uh, Tom has uh, graciously accepted, Tom Hanson has graciously accepted that he would become chair of the committee. Uh, like I said, I would still stay on the committee and help him out with historical stuff and reviewing that. But um, we are moving along. Just excuse me for one second because I think I have bad news for Jim and good news for Tom. I believe, and JT will know for sure, um, I believe councils elect or, or committees elect their own chairs, but that would actually require a committee meeting with sufficient quorum to elect a chair, which would require three people to be <laughs> present. Don't even the chair appoints, so it would be three people. I'm just trying to find that, JT, because. Got bad news was, for you. That was capitalized, all caps. I have very, very bad news if you look at page nine of the bylaws. Oh, rip that page out. The chairperson shall appoint committees. The chairperson of all committees, other than the executive committee and the nominating committee, shall be elected by the members appointed to those committees. So, one more meeting, JT. <laughs> 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 one, one more meeting. I only go from eight and then there's a page missing. <laughs> this page intentionally left blank, which is number nine. 
Anybody have anything for bylaws other than a profound thank you for the work that uh, Tom, Lanny, JT, and, and Carol are uh, embarking on? Because that's a tough one. All right. Thank you all very much. Uh, awards and PR. Greg. Uh, nothing much happening right now. It's just planning on what's going to happen in July next year. Uh, we're trying to get the first ones in, looking at some places. Here's the pamphlet if anybody wants to see it from uh, Vital Signs for the current uh, winner. It's just an opportunity to review it. Anybody can review it if they like. Uh, we didn't get anything this year, uh, but uh, we'll start working on it next year. And if I heard correctly, Greg, we've already received a couple of um, nominations for awards. Is that correct? Um, I've not received anything directly. Okay. I just heard a rumor that some people had submitted stuff already. So. Uh, we have some from Here's the time that um, one of the requirements is that it has to be in a specific year. Okay. So, we can, so if it happened this year, it can't be nominated for this year. It has to be the previous year. Okay. So there are some things that, that we might have. But we do hold some older that didn't get selected to the award. <coughs> we do hold them for awards. All right, great. Uh, operations review. Anybody have anything from Carol for operations? Okay, we'll go with no report. Anybody have anything for Carol? Um, program agency is Tony Ballister. Tony, I have not had any luck communicating with. Does anybody have good contact information for Tony they could share with me at some point? Thank you. Can you catch me after the meeting and I can get it for you? <coughs> If you tell him before we speak, we hope he gets well. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't see anybody from Bureau VMS here tonight. Anything for <gasps> the Bureau? Okay. Uh, executive Board, I have nothing. Anything for Executive Board? Okay, and as it's November, we have to appoint a nominating committee. Uh, JT, are you willing to serve as chair again? Thank you, sir. One member from... Erie County, do we have a member from Wyoming County willing to serve on the nominating committee? I'm trying to look through Don to Ann as she's done it in the past. Will you serve on the nominating committee at JT again? Yeah. Thanks, Ann. Anybody else want to serve on the nominating committee? We have one member from each county. And Dan McCartan. Anybody else? Great. We have a three-member nominating committee, and JT, do you have any discussion, report, conversation that we need to have now? Under uh, new business, we need to open up our nominations for them. Okay. So we'll do that in a new business? Great. Okay. Anything for nominating committee other than what they're going to have to do when we get there? All right. Program agency, Scott. <coughs> Oh, hang on, I can back this up and just make yeah, it official. Right. Carol, nothing from operations, right? Nothing for the operations review? No. The committee? Okay, just wanted to make it official. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, the report was uh, was submitted today. There were a couple of attachments that went out in my email. Um, one of the things I want to point out, this probably could fall under a training and ed. Uh, we had a core sponsor meeting. This was actually a, a few hours prior to the September regional council meeting. I reported on it last meeting, but um, the minutes from that meeting were included in my report if anybody wants to see it. Essentially what it was was just an opportunity to get all the core sponsors together along with us, the, the specialty core sponsor uh, for the Wyoming area region, just to find out what are the needs, what are the instructor needs, what are their gaps, how can we um, try to help improve uh, the instructor situation in the area, lay down a footprint for, um, for classes, uh, instructor updates. Uh, lab instructor CIC classes over the coming year and really what we want to do is just get everybody together one time every year so that we can have these things so that it's not me guessing what the needs are in the core sponsors but actually getting the feedback from the core sponsors and so that we can you know better work together and, um, and plan accordingly. Um, to that I also reported at the last meeting that our core sponsor, uh, specialty core sponsorship um, as we had ant anticipated that it had been uh, suspended because we couldn't provide all the documents that the Bureau needed for our long-form renewal that came up over the summer. Um, and 
that was because of the network access and we didn't have access to our policies and procedures, we couldn't give them to them. Um, and, and there were a couple of other very minor things that were very easily remedied. We've responded to that, we gave it to the Bureau, we've not heard back. Um, I suspect it's probably because of vital signs and most of them are out of the office. So um, as soon as we are good to go, we're gonna move forward, we have a plan. And so um, it was just really, it was things that were out of our control. Um, so we're just kind of waiting to hear. Um, also included in, uh, in my report, um, I did circulated our notes from the CMAC CEMSCO uh, meeting. It's really great, uh, already hit the high points from there. Um, also in our report, uh, we've done a number of uh, training, preceptor training courses. Uh, there's one at Twin, Twin City Ambulance on September 18th, October 24th was out in Wyoming County, and then there was one just this morning at Buffalo Fire Department. Um, as the program agencies, uh, really throughout the state. Um, there's been a stroke initiative that we've, um, that we partnered with the, with the Bureau and um, some of our neighboring program agencies to the north and the south and also in central New York. We have been invited part to participate in the Central Western Stroke Care Coordinators uh, quarterly meeting. This is a good thing because uh, this really gives us an opportunity to kind of meet with uh, the, the people who are heading up stroke care in our regions and it gives EMS a seat and a voice at the table. Um, I know Emily was there in, with her role with uh, Catholic Health um, and the other program agencies were also present. Um, it gives us really a chance to, uh, like I said, give EMS a voice, but if there's gonna be a change that's gonna be coming out, it allows us as the information uh, conduit for the, for the services in the area to get this information firsthand, push it out as a unified voice to the EMS community so that way people are aware of what, what the expectation is going to be before people get cranky and think that we're kind of ignoring them and, and not doing it. So um, it is another meeting to go to. It is in beautiful Geneva, New York, uh, but um, it's, it's kind of worth the, the time because there, there's some bang in, in this meeting. Uh, and you can, I will tell you, hit a couple wineries on the way home. Um, one of the other items, I don't, I probably wouldn't normally include this in, in my reports, but I did this time. We're working with Dr. Brown out of um, St. Joe's Hospital. I uh, had a meeting with her today, um, and this has been something that's been festering for a little while. Many times in my reports, we're seeing when we have services that are uh, struggling to meet deadlines and um, specifically credentialing, um, and you know, whenever there's a BLS first response update, we have services that aren't responding to it. And what we've seen over the past several years is that we, we have, it's really isolated to a handful of services that kind of are routinely on these lists for not being compliant. Um, and a number of those services are within the town of Chitawaga. And so we're, I'm sharing this with you because I want you to know that we're really trying to work with their medical director, we're not, uh, we don't want to be there to, to, to carry a stick and whack them over the head. Um, we want to try to fix these issues and we're, we're really trying to be proactive, identify what the issues are, how we can better collaborate, how we can better communicate uh, with these services. And um, so we, uh, we're intending to, we're working very closely with Dr. Brown to try to um, orchestrate uh, really a get together with the services specifically within Chicago so we can address any concerns that they have and um, organize a medical director meeting. And so this is important to you because you guys are the, the body that oversees um, the operation of EMS within the two counties. And so we're trying to fix some of these communication and integration issues that we're having um, within some of these focus pockets. So um, that's included in there. Um, the Bureau's updated the EPCR application. If you know of any services that are looking to go to EPCRs, um, there's an actual application now, and it's considered like any other thing that the, any other application that the Bureau has. It has to be completed in its entirety. It has to be signed off by all parties and then submitted. Um, this is actually good because the EPCR process for a while has not been particularly clear. Um, so this is a good thing. Um, to follow up on credentialing, which was the June 30th deadline on the back page of my first page, 
Um, there were some services that did not submit the REMAC annual summary report. Um, if you read REMAC reports, there was a little bit more to this report uh, that was presented to the REMAC. And this list is specifically those who did not submit anything at all. And then it also gives the status of, of where they're at today. The REMAC sent a certified letter to each of these uh, services stating that they had um, until basically last week to get these lists in. If they didn't submit, then um, there's going to be essentially sanctions imposed on these services. Uh, there are only uh, like five services that didn't submit. What we are finding is that two of the companies, North Bailey is one, and I believe it is um, North Boston, uh, those two services actually don't have any EMS providers in those companies. So that creates a little bit of an issue whether they even qualify to be a BLSFR, that's not for me uh, to decide, but um, that might impact their, their continuation of having a um, uh, state EMS ID. So we shall see. Other than that, um, I think that's it. The only correction that's in here that says the next REMAC meeting is on Wednesday, September 15th. It's actually November, but it is in Olean, and uh, it's going to be at the new STEMS building. Okay. Any questions for me? Thank you. Thanks, Kev. Um, old business, the only thing on the agenda there is an updated MOU with the program agency to deal with the address updates and mailings. And records retention, nothing's been transferred yet. Chris is uh, on vacation, but in the process of dealing with much of the address change, as is Madonna, who is also on vacation, and um, Kevin with some of that. So we're in the process of working that out, and uh, obviously want to get Mr. Ballister involved in that as the chair of our uh, current chair of our program agency steering committee. So until we have that all sorted out, there will uh, be no new information. So um, that's all pending. Is there any other old business? Okay, new business. Old business or new business? Hey, sir. Uh, she's a little older, but this is Emily Rawls. Uh, I don't know if we have a visitor. Uh, she's from the Catholic Health System now. She can tell us a little bit about what her job is as far as outreach for the uh, health welfare workers. So this is Emily. Hello. Hello. I know most of you. doing a lot of what we call roadside education, so actually just going out to these guys as they sit on corners or they're at their quarters. If there's education that your agencies are looking for, please let me know. Catholic Health has a wide spectrum of things that we cover that we're able to come in and do some education on. If there's issues, if you're trying to build relationships and you think we can help, please let me know. Don't hesitate to contact me. Hey, I have some comments. This would be a good cooperation here between the Catholic Health or Dwight if they have the Thanks for being here. Thank you. I told you the last week. The other thing is there were four, there were um, eight responses per um, people seen for the people in the last year. I'm sorry? There were eight responses for the crisis team in the last year. Okay. Any other new business? December 1st. 
He does now. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like, like a little shocked by that announcement. Surprise! Um, Tom, would you just... Would you send a, just a brief invitation to me by email and we'll disseminate it to all the council members? Absolutely. Thank you. And Cliff, congratulations. Yeah. Do you want to say a few words other than thank you? He never says um, any words. <laughs> well, that's true. It's, uh, you know, I'm just amazed at how far EMS has come and how much has changed since I started Started, if you had oxygen in, in your tank and splints under your squad vent, you were good to go. And uh, you know, the owner at that time, Doug Baker, felt that there was there was better things to, to come to EMS and better patient care to be had. And so one of the things he did, uh, which nobody was doing at that time uh, in the ambulance, was taking vital signs. And uh, say the nurses perhaps thought felt a little threatened but first time I rolled into one particular ER and gave the nurse a report including vital signs she went up one side of me and down the other and wanted to know if I thought I was a doctor or something or be taking vital signs so any idea how far it's uh, come over the years when it's over that was nine year old Mary no <laughs> For those that haven't been around 46 years, think about what would happen if you gave a report without vital signs today. Or had your IV started or your blood stood up. Right. Thank you, Cliff. We appreciate uh, all you've done for EMS and, and like the service. Um, other new business? Um, on the same line of retirement, uh, Lee Burns is going to be one of the speakers on uh, Thursday, December 14th. His uh, well partner who he is with the uh, hospital and public health and EMS and he gave talks at the uh, Erie Countryside Training Center. Um, it's an all-day meeting with a bunch of stuff that we have to do, but Lee will be there in the morning. She's committed to coming out right before she retires to kind of talk about the, the state of EMS and what uh, kind of what's coming in the future. So I don't know if she wanted to be here for any other activity. In the interim, so if anyone wants to show up that day, it's just what that's day two. We have trade two on the south mill. We can all be good to go. Thanks, Tim. What other new business? Nominations. Okay, as we've done in the past, um, tonight we will open up the floor for nominations. individuals. Uh, the two positions that are going to be open are chairman or chairperson I should say and chair elect. Uh, presently Brian is the chair. He has indicated that he would uh, like to continue for another year which is one of the bylaws we're working on. This is getting ridiculous every year we do this so uh, we pretty much want to look at uh, changing that to every two years to be in uh, uh, aligned with the uh, treasurer and secretary. So we'll open up nominations on the floor for uh, chairman. Any nominations on the floor for chairman for the first time? Chairperson, I should say. Any nominations on the floor for chairperson for the second time? Any nominations on the floor for chairperson for the third time? We nominate Brian Bernard as the chairman. Second. Okay, you need a motion to close nominations? Who moved? I'm sorry. Dan. Dan second. second from Don. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Against? Carried. Abstentions. <laughs> Next position is chair elect. Uh, presently we have blank in that position. Uh, no one was interested. 
interested. And again, according to our bylaws, um, we try to have, well, our bylaws state the chair is from Erie County, the chair should elect should be from Wyoming County. Uh, conversely, with the charter, same thing. Uh, opposing um, counties, again, so one county Does anybody want to know who isn't here from Wyoming County tonight? <laughs> <laughs> We've done it in the past, right, Tony? <laughs> I think Tony brings us in. Tony, can I talk you outside? <laughs> Any nominations on the floor ready? for the chair yeah, elect for the second time? <laughs> Any nominations on the floor for chair elect for the third time? Nominate Ryan Brandon. Uh, I don't think Lanny's eligible. I think you have to serve for two years. Next year, Don. Hearing none, I will ask for a motion to close nominations for Chair Elect. So moved. Don, you want to nominate anybody who's eligible before that vote passes? What's that? You want to nominate anybody who's eligible before that vote passes? Yeah, that's my one shot. We got a first, any second? So I don't know. All in favor say aye. Yeah, totally. Aye. Against? So carried. So, what we're going to have the secretary do is um, you can still, if you're interested or you know someone who's interested in either of those positions, um, they can submit either in writing or by email to me, and then I will forward to the uh, other two individuals on our committee uh, in writing their intentions if they want to be for the position of chairperson or chairperson elect. Uh, all correspondence needs to be in to me by the close of business on the 15th of December. Once that happens, again, we get the nominating committee together and we'll review and we will present the slate at the uh, next meeting in January. Um, can I set that at 1700 JT? Is that close of business 1700 is fine? I will uh, get that out to the council in separate correspondence, soliciting that um, to your email as well. That's the extent of the report for nominations for now. Any other new business? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Sir, before we adjourn, oh. I would like us to end the meeting in a moment of silence in honor of uh, Officer Craig Lehner. And upcoming is November 11th. I think we need a second on that. Thanks, everybody.